All right, can everybody see? Yes. Fantastic. All right, so I talked a little bit about how, how this all came about and the What Works series and, and it's thinking about it. I love technology. There we go. All right, so today we're talking about building trust through video. Um, and I've asked Brad O'Hara with Storycatcher Studio to talk to us today. Uh, Brad and I have worked together for many years and um, he has a great approach to video. So what we're gonna talk about today, um, I wanna talk to you a little bit about marketing strategy versus tactics. Cause I think this is an area where people get a little confused um, and, and how to how to really create a marketing strategy for your business. Um, Brad's going to talk to us about the three things that you need before starting a video, and then the three ways to use video to build trust. Um, and then we're going to open up for Q&A at the end. Um, Brad and I both like to answer questions and um, help you help add value um, to, to the call today. So let's jump right in and talk about uh, marketing versus tactics or a marketing strategy versus tactics. So I call this the five keys. It's just, it really is the communication process and how you create a marketing strategy that's specific to your business. Um, the first part is, the first key would be assessment. And this is where you're really understanding your brand, kind of figuring out your, your company identity. So why do you do what you do? Uh, what are your unique selling points? What are your core values? What are the things that make you special? And using those as your key messages when you're talking about your brand. The second part of that is really understanding your ideal customers. So who are these people? What are the, the demographics around them? What, what are their personalities? What are they like? What are they into? And most importantly, where are they getting their communication? How do they like to be communicated with? Um, is it is it through social media? Is it, you know, outdoor billboards and and radio are not dead? You know, is it is it email? You know, word of mouth. You know, there's so many different ways that people like to get information. And so, what is it that your customers like? So, really, just taking that time to understand who you are as a company, what your brand is, and who your people are. Uh, the next part is goal setting, and this is a really important thing for marketing. Uh, because I find so often people like to just throw marketing tactics at the wall to see what sticks like spaghetti. And so without really saying, okay, what are my goals? What am I trying to accomplish? So one, look at your overall business goals. What are you trying to accomplish for the year? And then how do you break that into smaller pieces? So you're figuring out what is your, your marketing strategy? Maybe you take it a quarter at a time. Maybe it's around a specific project that you're trying to do. But, but breaking it down into something smaller and more manageable so that you can implement the right tactics, but you can also do some evaluation at the end to really figure out, okay, these things worked and these things didn't work. So you can dial it in. Um, the third part of that, and really what we're talking about today is, is video is one of those tactics that you use as part of your overall strategy. Um, and it's a really great tactic to use because people crave to have a connection with the people that they work and, and the companies where they, they buy their products. Um, there's so many different ways you can use video and we'll get into that today. Um, but this is really where you kind of create that plan and you determine um, your strategy. And then it's just a matter of implementation. But as I mentioned, the thing that a lot of people forget to do is that evaluation at the end. You know, I wish I could tell you that communications was an exact science, but it's just not. And so making sure that you're evaluating, see what social media messages are resonating with your people, what's engaging people, you know, are you trying other tactics and you're not really getting the results that you wanted? So is that a matter of your message is wrong or is that just that's not how your your ideal customers get their messaging? So there's some trial and error involved as you're trying to dial into exactly what works for your business. But those are the, really the things that you go through in creating a marketing strategy. 
Um, and so with that, I am going to turn this over to Brad because I'm very excited to hear what he has to say today. So as I mentioned, Brad and I have worked together for many years, but he has the most amazing approach to video and to telling stories. And he's just so gifted at helping you pull out um, the right messaging and the right way to talk to your audience. And so with that, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm gonna let Brad take it away. Well, that's a very kind introduction. Let me, uh, let me see if I can figure this thing out. Hey, does that work? You did it. Ha ha. Maybe I'm in the wrong field. I should switch over to IT or something. I shouldn't because this is the first time that's ever worked. And now I don't know how to make it work. Uh-oh. You just roll your face on your keyboard and it'll work. I think we might be doing it this way. Do you guys see that? Yes, we can. Because of my lack of now, now I figured I should not go into IT. <laughs> so we're all, I'm going to do, I have no idea what I'm doing, people. That's not it. Uh, did you try going into um, presentation F5. mode? F5. Presentation. What? Did you try going into presentation mode? It's one of those options that's down on the bottom right. It's like the, the one that looks like a little computer monitor. Next one over to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. Next one. There you go. Click that bad boy. Yeah. There you go. You guys. There you go. You guys are leading, left. You guys are leading me in a webinar. <laughs> so uh, the, the whole idea of what I do is building trust with video. Um, that's the whole idea behind story catcher. That's the heartbeat of everything involved. And so to help you understand a little bit of that, my background is for 20 plus years, I've been helping people tell stories. Uh, for most of that time, I was in the film world and in the, let's call it corporate documentary world, corporate storytelling world of doing the higher production. Hey, we're going to create a 50 to $100,000 commercial. And then somebody's going to put a hundred thousand dollars of ad spend behind it and see what happens. Uh, and just to be very, very honest with you, I hated that world. <laughs> um, I didn't see the tremendous value in that world to the average business. Um, there's very few businesses that can make videos like that and have the budget to do videos like that. And for the most part, uh, I've, I've learned over the years that most companies that save up to make a very high production video are doing it more to prove to themselves that they made it than they are to build trust with their audience. Uh, and so my passion and love for storytelling over time and authenticity over time led me to this really deep rooted belief that what people need is to start conversations that build trust and video in today's environment and marketing atmosphere is ubiquitous right with video your presence and your personality and your brand can become ubiquitous everywhere you can be email marketing you can be part of social media marketing you can be part of sales and culture and all these different things um and so th this idea of story catcher studio came to mind of you know what i'm going to create a place that's just about that uh, and so at Story Catcher Studio, we, we exist to really educate, empower, and equip small business owners to build trust with video in their marketing, sales, and culture. Um, with all that said, here's a picture of a frying pan. I'll let you take that in for a minute. Uh, did you take it in? Did you take it in? We're there. <laughs> so one of my favorite stories I've ever read in a book and it's, with, and it's a book by somebody I disagree with fundamentally on a lot of things. And that is Zig Ziglar. <laughs> uh, I, I love Zig Ziglar and I disagree with Zig Ziglar on a lot of things, but he tells this story at the beginning of, of one of his, uh, I don't even think it was one of his books. It was in one of his collections of speeches and stories. Um, he has this friend who's going door to door selling pots and pans and 
his friend calls him up and says, Zig, man, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm failing. These are the best pots and pans on the market. I don't get it. I've, I've got all my pitches down. I've got all this stuff right. I don't get it. And so Zig goes to his house and visits him and is sitting down and they're talking and this guy's telling him about all the things he's trying and all the things he's doing to, to sell these pots and pans and grow this business and how amazing they are. And while Zig Ziglar is sitting there, he looks over and he's looking around this guy's house. He looks in his kitchen and, and he says, man, I got it. I understand why you're not selling anything. And, and the guy looks at him and says, why, why tell me I'll do anything. And he says, you don't own them. And, and the guy looks at him and says, what are you talking about? He said, you told me these are the best pots and pans ever to be made, ever to be sold. And you don't have them in your kitchen. Why? And the guy starts coming up with every excuse in the world, right? Of, oh, my daughter needs a surgery, this and that. And we're crunched financially and with sales being slow and all that. And he says, and, and basically Zig Ziglar comes to this point and gets it through to this guy that if you don't believe in what you're doing, why should anybody else? And so on the front end of anything, before we talk about making videos, before we talk about adding value and all that, I want to challenge you from the foundation of story, right, to believe in what you're doing. If you don't, Nobody else will either because it's inauthentic, right? If you believe in what you're doing, you're not selling people stuff. You're truly adding value to people. You're making their lives better and easier, and you're helping them become who they desire to become, which is so much of story, right? Um, story from my, from my mentors in this field, story is what brings order to chaos, and the world is chaos. And so story is needed to bring order, but we have to believe in the story we're, we're sharing. If we don't believe in it, and, and I'm going to challenge you, if you don't believe wholeheartedly in the story you're telling or the product you're providing or the service you're providing, man, I'm, I want to challenge you to go look in the mirror. Uh, and if you can't come to a place of belief, it's okay to do something else. Uh, I, this is probably a whole nother webinar, but I can't tell you, I've probably started three businesses in my life that I had no business starting and no business being involved in and two or three ventures that I didn't even believe in. It just seemed like, oh, this is a good business. And those businesses, guess what? Guess what they did? They failed. <laughs> uh, some of them royally and one of them marginally, and I just learned lessons from it. <laughs> But, but now I've made that commitment of, I will believe in anything I do because that will be the foundation of building trust with anybody else, right? And trust is the foundation of relationships. So story brings uh, order to chaos. And so why, why are we here? I'm gonna guess some of this because I can't read all of it because your pictures are covering it. You're prettier than it is, uh, you know, Starting meaningful conversations that lead to outcomes are hard, uh, especially in today's remote world, right? Whether it's uh, your, your community, your customers, uh, your, your team, or everybody. That's why I believe everybody should be using video as part of what Elizabeth said, their marketing strategy and tactics. You should be using it to build trust with people in your marketing sales and culture. Um, and oh, I forgot to say this. I'm a scatterbrained storyteller and I'm a conversationalist. And so I'll talk. But I want all of you guys to know that if there's something that's like, oh my gosh, I need clarity on that, or oh my gosh, I really have a question on that that's going to help people, I want you to unmute yourself and just like maybe yell, hey, Brad, or shut up. And I'll, <laughs> and I'll do said things. And, and I would rather have conversations than talk at you. So uh, the three things is quite simply, one of the most overwhelming things I find with people when it comes to video is the phrase, and I have no idea what to say, right? That's, that's such an overwhelming and almost paralyzing fear of, 
I, I don't know what to say, which eventually and very quickly sometimes will lead to imposter syndrome, right? Like, oh man, if I start talking, people are going to realize that I'm not this or that I'm that. And I want to encourage you. You guys have spent hours and hours, hundreds to thousands of hours becoming an expert at what you're an expert at. And the world needs that expertise. Your clients need that expertise. So you have enough to talk about. So this is the three things I would share with anybody who, man, I wanna make videos, I wanna write content, whatever, but I don't have any idea where to start. This to me is the baseline of where we start. It's where we start at Storycatcher. It's even where I started putting this presentation together. So the three things, what is the one thing I'm saying, right? Like we have the propensity as experts to overshare, to hit people with a fire hose, uh, to say, here's all the things you need to know. And they're done listening before we're done talking generally. Um, so what is the one thing I'm saying in this, in this video? And it, it can be, all right, I know these eight conversations that I want to have with everybody that ever becomes a client, or it can be, all right, I'm looking at my social media, competitor social media, everything in general and seeing people are asking this question and I know the answer to it. So start with that. What is the one thing I'm saying? And then after that, you need to define why does my customer need it? Like, why do they need to know the answer to this? Why do they need to know this one thing? If, if this one thing is incredibly important, why is it important? And then the third thing, how can they apply it immediately? Right? That's, it's great if it's, hey, over the next 10 years, you can get to this point. But I want to know step one. Journey of a thousand miles is great but I wanna know the first step and then the next one and then the next one as we go. Um, so as an expert in whatever you're an expert in, if you can answer those three questions, you have the great foundation for any video you'll ever make. Uh, the rest of it, you're just filling in. Yeah, and get on camera, get comfortable with it. I wish there was some three steps to be a Hollywood actor in five minutes, there's not. <laughs> Uh, the best thing you're going to do is get in front of camera over and over. Uh, James Bullis, who's standing still right now in a white square background, um, that's a picture. Uh, he, he's a believer in this mentality and this approach because James has been making himself make videos probably pretty much every day for a few years now. And I guarantee you the first six months of it felt really awkward and he may have thrown a lot of it out and he may not have done anything with a lot of it, but it got him used to being on camera and seeing himself. And so if you can get used to being on camera and seeing yourself and you can answer those three simple questions, what the, what's the one thing you need them to hear? What's the one thing you're saying? Why, does, why do they need to hear it? What's it gonna do? How's it gonna transform them? How's it going to make their life better, right? And then how can they apply it immediately? Um, so those are the three things before we start. And the, the rest of this is I'm going, to I'm going to try to talk very briefly about marketing, sales, and culture and how you can implement video because that's what we're passionate about helping our clients do here at, at Storycatcher. That's what I'm passionate about helping people do. Uh, and to frame all of that, it, you know, it says your story, the flywheel of business growth. So I, I have this philosophy and approach to business that says this, right? I, I don't have the, the funnel mentality that you get to the end to and it ends. I don't have the mentality of campaigns. I, I have the mentality of business is a flywheel that it's marketing sales and service. Uh, this isn't my idea. I would love to claim it. It's not, uh, I've molded it into Brad's brain, but it's not my idea. This actually originated with Jeff Bezos in Amazon, uh, where it was called, I think, uh, a value wheel of how to create a business that added and got the most value from their customers. And the cool part about this to me was that idea that the customers are the center of the entire flywheel. They're the energy that makes it move. They're the energy that your business is going to grow by. 
Um, and I would add your team to the same part, like <clears throat> as a leader and as a business leader, my team and my employees are my number one customer, right? Uh, so customers and team are the energy that is going to push marketing, sales, and service, awareness, engagement, and delight over and over and over and over. And so that's the way I think about using video within what I do. And that's where I get that marketing, sales, and culture. Because if I can use video that engages in the marketing aspects, in the sales aspects, in the culture aspects, then I'm creating customers who become promoters and I'm taking strangers and making them prospects to customers, to promoters, and on and on the wheel goes. And then you, you get to decide how much you want to scale your business from that point, right? There's obviously, uh, I, I see Doc on here. I'm guessing that's not like Dr. J, like the basketball player. Um, <laughs> but, but like in a, in a medical practice, you have a ceiling of scalability, right? So that's, and that's all business concepts. You, you can only see so many patients a day. There's a cap unless you build more, more offices. But in most businesses, there's this trust and this scalability of trust and relationship that can go on and on and on and on. And as it goes, you're scaling a business that, number one, yeah, it's sellable, scalable, all that kind of stuff. Number two, it's meaningful. <laughs> um, I'd rather have a low ceiling and be meaningful the rest of my life than live in a high rise and be completely purposeless. So that I had to say that I'm out of the way now. Uh, so the first, first area that I love video for business is marketing and it's, and I use it to build trust, to build relationships. So I will tell you that at Storycatcher, 75% of our leads come from the stuff we post on LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, and, and here's the simplicity of this. Anybody ever who likes, comments, shares, anything, any of our content, we reach out with this message. Thanks so much for taking the time to, to watch that. I hope it added value and, and helped you in some way. Let me know if there's anything we can do. That's it. We don't give the hard sale LinkedIn message of, Hey, I wanted to connect and I saw that we're both connected to similar people and here's 500 things that I can do for you right now. Let's schedule a call. That's what I imagine most of those people sound like. Um, but it's, it, there's an authenticity in the process, right? We, we make real authentic videos. I am who I am. I'm not going to put on airs. This is how I talk on the videos we make because this is who I am. And this is who people are going to meet if we get on a sales call. This is who people are going to meet if we get coffee at a coffee shop. So it would be a tremendous fabrication and lie for me to be somebody else on video and then show up and scare the crap out of them. Um, <clears throat> so on the marketing side, use video to build trust, to build relationships. I, I love to tell people in, in something I call a story consult, which, which is Elizabeth is going to offer the 30 minute ones when we're done with this. Uh, you can schedule with me. I'd love to do it. Um, I, I usually sit down. I say, all right, listen, if you had one hour at coffee with your ideal client, your ideal client being like Elizabeth said, who do you add the most value to that also adds the most value to you? So you take this person, you know, they're sitting in front of you what eight conversations would you like to start with this person? And then guess what your eight, guess what your first eight videos are going to be? <laughs> They're going to be the eight conversations you should be starting, right? Your marketing videos, man, unless you're doing podcasts and all that kind of stuff, marketing videos are not meant to answer every question in somebody's head. Marketing videos are a fantastic way to start a conversation that can become more meaningful with each interaction. And, and, and as a con I call it a conversation starter because I'm saying this to you and then I'm giving you an opportunity to speak back. You can reach out, you can schedule the calls, you can do whatever, but it's gonna be a voluntary conversation. I'm not gonna barrage you with, 
do this, do this, do this, do this, buy, 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 buy. I'm going to give you an opportunity every time of, hey, schedule a call, right? That's, that's the next step for a story catcher. That's my one call to action. Man, if you need something, schedule a call and we'll go from there. Um, so I'm going to give you my, my uh, inside if I can get it to go again. There it goes. So uh, this is what we use at, at Storycatcher, and it's it looks like a funnel because it is. <laughs> I just don't think of it in that mindset because funnels end, uh, flywheels don't. <laughs> but but my simple thought is, all right, we're going to use organic or paid traffic, social media, uh, SEO, all these types of things, and the videos we're going to we're going to make are going to start the right conversations. And even if it's the same conversation a hundred times a year, I'm going to start that conversation. And then if you choose to go somewhere from there, other than schedule a call, you're going to go to what we call the give, grow, go, which is I'm going to offer you something of free value, something that's going to help you get further, something that's going to help you get started. Uh, we have a, right now the one video script every business should be using, right? Which is kind of a templatized worksheet type guide for you to fill out and, okay, we're gonna develop our script for one video. And in the process, the cool part is you're also gonna really clarify your message. Um, and we go from that to what we call the grow, which is a really simple video follow-up of, hey, here's, here's what you're gonna get out of doing, doing this guide, doing this worksheet, going through this process. Here's something you should focus on while you're doing it. A little bit of a value add, right? If they don't go from there to do anything, schedule a call, then they go into a, a detour one, I call it email funnel, which is a simple value add, value add, value add. If they say yes, they go to go. And go to me is a few days later, I'm gonna make the assumption that they went through this worksheet, they filled it out, they, they got some value out of it. And so that go video is very simply, hey, I, I'm sure that this is applying to your business. You're rocking and rolling. Hopefully you've made the video. If you haven't, you should. Uh, I'd love to schedule a call, figure out how we can go the next step, go further, go further. It, it, it's always about asking somebody to take the next step, right? So there's the marketing side, which is just this huge net of here's conversations I want to have. Here's things I think you should know that are going to help you in life. Here's value adds. Here's, here's how I've screwed up, right? Who's it? John Maxwell that talks about that. Like people are going to learn more from the ways I screwed up than the great things I've done. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty open and honest about, man, I've done this before. Just like we talked about, man, I've started a couple businesses for that fell flat on their stinking faces. And I've learned more from those than the businesses I have that are successful. The ones that failed are the reasons these are successful. So uh, that, that's a, a little bit behind the scenes of how we do marketing. We, we do the, the main layer of just pushing stuff out. And then we have that kind of give, grow, go mentality. Each one of those Gs we do a video with, they're not personalized. It's one video that goes on a page that has a call to action. Um, that's all that's all magic to me that side of it <laughs> i know the video side of it if you want the guy to build the magic side of it uh click on james and, and instant message him and and he'll give me 50 percent of anything you spend with him <laughs> he's muted he doesn't <laughs> um so the the next part for me marketing and sales right i go back to that flywheel if you don't plan on converting somebody into a customer there's no real reason to market <laughs> that's it's a little known secret in the business world uh and unfortunately most businesses don't think of this part of the process right we want to think about marketing because it's fun we want to think about man what kind of cool stuff can i create what kind of cool videos can i create what what's all this fun stuff i can do because that's enjoyable to me. It is to me personally, because you can perfect everything there, right? I can perfect this handout. I can perfect my business card. I can perfect 
all these videos, I can perfect my messaging. And the reality is most of us as entrepreneurs aren't great at the sales part. Uh, and so for me and my business, because personally, that straightforward sales asking for the close is not a great strength of mine. I'm much better at reactive sales than I am at proactive sales. I'm not the dial for dollars kind. I'm not the um, go knock on your door and ask you to buy something kind. I'm, I'm the kind of person that if you reach out to me to start a conversation, we're going to have a conversation. And if I'm the right fit, we'll, we'll do business together. And if I'm not, I'm, the, I'm also the type of person that's going to say, oh, you should really go talk to such and such because I feel like what you need is more up their vein than mine. Um, so sales to me, build trust that builds revenue, right? Uh, so simply, simply put, I, I, I templatize this into three really simple videos. Uh, and I tried to come up with clever names and I sort of failed at it now that I'm reading them on a big screen. So forgive me. Be clear, not clever. Uh, the, the first video I do is a warm hello. And the TP is not toilet paper. It is templatized or personalized. So here's how I decide these. I, templatized is I have a breakdown of what we do and how we add value to our clients. And then I create intros for unique people. So I'd say, you know, hey, we, we help, we educate, empower, and equip people to build trust with video in their marketing, sales, and culture. That would be my short templatized version. And then I would do a whole bunch of intros that we would edit together, right? Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Lori. Hey, James. Hey, Dr. J. <laughs> I, I apologize. You will forever now be a basketball player in my head. Um, but it's, it, that's templatized and that is just for expediency and the value of making video quicker and being able to reach a lot more people. What we've learned is I don't send those to people I've never met or people that wouldn't know my name because the open rate was horrendous. We sent 600 cold emails to try it out to test. And I think we had 10 opens uh, and out of those 10 opens, zero anything. And so that was, I wanted to try that before we suggested to anybody else they tried it. And for us, it was a royal failure. Uh, what has been crazy successful is anybody who we've done business with, anybody who I've met at an event that would know my name, anybody that, um, anybody that would recognize Storycatcher Studio as a company, those people, we get like an 80% open rate. And probably about 10% schedule meetings. So for me, that's a win, right? And then the next level for me is the personalized side of this is a VIP prospect. This is like not, not the whale idea of a huge account, but this is my ideal client. This is a person I want to do business with for a very long time, and I'm going to fight for it. Um, this is the person that I'm going to make a one-off video. I'm going to look through their LinkedIn, through their website, and I'm going to structure it with, here's how I think we could partner together to use video to build your business specifically. Um, the what's next is one video. I don't templatize that for people because we have a very clear, straightforward process. Um, you write your scripts, you come in the studio, you start building trust with video. <laughs> uh, so whatever the dynamic intricacies of each, each client are, the process is always the same. Uh, and that's so that we can keep scaling up the quality of what we deliver. That's so that the experience can be consistent. That's so our employees don't hate me. Um, uh, believe it or not, if you can tell how scattered I am mentally, it's not, it's not hard to get frustrated with me. Um, and then the third one is if nobody's scheduling a call, if nobody's responding, I send them to a, a basically a landing page that sends them on a detour to the give, grow, go. Like I, I treat them like somebody that I really want on social media to click through and download a free value thing so that I can prove what we do will add value to who you are. Right. And that's the point of a lead magnet to me, a lead magnet or the give, grow, go or whatever language you want to use 
it is not just to make sales to me. It is to prove out to you that I am who I say I am. We do what we say we do, and we care about you winning. Even if, even if all you do is download this thing and help, it helps you grow and you make a video with it and it's awesome, I'm happy because that's me living out my purpose. And if you're not at a place to be our client, I don't want you to be our client. I would rather you just get the free value we're offering, go kill it, knock it out of the park and grow yourself, right? Um, the third area, and I feel like I'm blazing through this, Elizabeth, I'm sorry if I'm ruining your series on what works marketing. Uh, the third area that we use video is culture, right? To build trust, to build strength. Uh, I'm a huge believer that the team anywhere is what is going to lead to the success or failure of a business, right? There's very few businesses who are one person shows. There are some, uh, you know, there, there's true solopreneurs and entrepreneurs that work in very small one person, two person teams. But the reality is if there's one, more than one person, you have what's called a tribe and you need to build your tribe because your tribe will lead to the success or failure of your organization. Uh, so in the building of trust, I, I always coach my clients in four different areas. Uh, I do five, three, one vision. Uh, 531 is simply, uh, this is from the coaching side of Brad, <laughs> uh, but it's the only language I have in my head. Uh, it's five-year dream, three-year vision, one-year focus, uh, and being able to talk about those things and speak to those things and visually project those things to a team. It helps the team start seeing what's in your head, right? Like as a leader, my responsibility is vision, is to know where we're going, know what's at the horizon, but it's also absolutely my privilege and responsibility to make sure that the team not only knows that point on the horizon, but is bought into it. Because if they're not, man, all of this is for, for nothing, right? And so for me, 531 vision, casting vision, casting mission, values, behavior, um, mission, mission's great, values are great, Values are one of my biggest pet peeves in business because they become the, the stupid Jack Handy posters on walls. You know, we believe in integrity while you're, while you're stealing from people. Um, <laughs> so I always take values a step further to behaviors of, you know, hey, we believe in honor. And what that looks like is, is this. It means that when we interact with each other, we treat each other in this type of way. It means that when we interact with our clients, we interact with our clients with this attitude and this model of behavior. This is how we treat people. Based on our values that we're claiming, this is how we treat people. And, and you'll be amazed, even on a small team, sending those videos, cell phone videos, we do them in studio. I'm always gonna promote that, but I'm also really great at out, talking myself out of stuff. Um, getting your cell phone and saying, here's why we started this business. Here's what we care about. Here's, here's the values and behaviors we hold true to. And sending that even to a small team, you'll be amazed at what you're gonna see in the growth side of them coming back to you and being like, oh man, I, I had never thought of that. And I will, I'd always seen this part of my job as so meaningless and like you were just giving me busy work. But now that I know this of, why we care about people that made this part of my job that I hated meaningful because now I see how it impacts the end client or the end user or the rest of the team. Um, language that wins to me is, you know, culture historically is uh, language traditions uh, and, and belief, right? So belief was kind of covered by those first two things. Language that wins to me is so simple on a business level. It's if everyone in our organization knew the definition of this word, we would be more successful. And so talking to your team, if you're a financial institution, whatever, hey, fiduciary applies like this, means this, and I can't define it. I know the word, so I wanted to sound smart, but I can't follow through on the definition. <laughs> 
if you can define the language of the team that will help the team win, you'll recognize that they start speaking it around the office, right? Video gives people access to you that they wouldn't normally have. Uh, again, ubiquitous, right? It, it gives you a conversation with team members that you otherwise would have zero margin to have. Um, and then the last one for me on culture is traditions that bind. Uh, to celebrate big wins, to celebrate things that matter, um, to, to celebrate and preview and, and break down the, the traditions that your company is going to have as a team, right? Whether that's silly game nights, whether that's pizza luncheons, or whether that's more meaningful, deep traditions, right? Like, I know a lot of businesses that are Christian or Muslim or Buddhist or have different religious beliefs or different cultural beliefs that everybody or the majority of people share. Obviously, you can't cross too many lines, but you can have traditions that say, hey, you know, uh, B&H photo video, uh, they shut down for Ramadan. They, they don't sell anything on uh, Saturdays, right? Like, so they have a foundational belief that, hey, this is a tradition. We don't do this. Not everybody has to be on board with it. That's cool. We get it. But because of this tradition, hey, we're going to do business this way. You know, Chick-fil-A is the famous Christian one. We don't sell chicken on Sundays. We'll kill them every other day, but we don't kill chickens on Sunday. Um, like, but it's a, it's a tradition that they've spread throughout the culture of their organization and they've done a great job of it. And not everybody has to believe it. I bet people don't mind having Sundays off, <laughs> especially in the food industry. Um, so that's the culture side. Uh, and so just coming back to that, uh, my, my belief on video is that you absolutely should be using video with people like Elizabeth and people like James who do the strategy and implementation. You should be using it to build trust in every area of your business. It's not just for commercials. It's not just for high dollar shoots. It is what you have to say matters to your customers, to your prospects, to your employees and you should be saying it. And if you're not, shame on you. And that is the end of the things I'm going to say. Brad, thank you so much. That was, that was a lot of good stuff. There was, I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch that. There were a lot of nuggets in there that I need to, to take away from that. Um, at this point, I wanna open it up to Q and A because I know you guys have questions after all of that stuff. Not all at once. <laughs> Brian, I think you're muted. Can you hear me? Okay, I, I'm sorry. Okay, I thought I'd unmuted. Uh, that was that was very good and and very helpful. A um, lot a lot of takeaways, like you said, uh, Elizabeth. Um, can can you talk a little bit about you know now that everybody has you know the cell phone and then you have the your level of production and and so forth how do you choose what you know level of production is appropriate in what set of circumstances oh absolutely great question brian um i think as a studio owner who obviously wants to grow my own business great i think there's a place for what we do right i think there's a place for the higher end production, who is going to be the twenty to fifty to hundred thousand dollar production for the right companies? I think that company is a much different company than most. Um, but I also think that every business should be using the. Oh my gosh, I had an amazing thought. Hold up my cell phone. I'm going to share this with the world. I I think you're wasting. I think you're wasting the use of video if you're not doing that. Um, and I think for what we do. It's a great, whether you do like the infinite white look or the, like we have a, a, the great old wood wall look or anything like that. Um, so, so whatever kind of background you're using, having that next level of, all right, it's going to have a bed of music. It's going to have lower thirds and an intro and an outro logo. That's great for this stuff that you want people to know, hey, I put a lot of effort in this to intentionally start building trust in these different ways. But, but Bryant, man, I would say wherever you're at, start. 
right? Like if you can't afford to come in here, it doesn't hurt my feelings, right? It would hurt my feelings if you went broke and drove your business into the ground to come in here and do stuff and then didn't get the results you wanted and it killed you. That would hurt my feelings more than seeing videos of you online with your cell phone saying, man, I had this amazing idea and there, here's this thought, I need to share it. So I see a place for all forms of video, but my, my answer to your question would be wherever you are, start something. If you don't have the budget, the, the benefit of me is that um, we're gonna have a story consult, we'll have the eight conversations, conversation, um, and then I'm gonna write script drafts, right? So the clients that come to us, unless they choose to write their own drafts, we're gonna have a conversation, I'm gonna collect certain information and I'm gonna write drafts for them and then they get to edit. So it takes a lot of the work off of their plate. So my model is I'm gonna make this as easy of a process as possible because video is painful for a lot of people. So the pain point I'm solving is you don't have to worry about everything. We're gonna have a conversation, which is fun and easy. I'm going to write the drafts. You're going to edit them. You're going to show up in studio. We're going to have a fun time. It's not going to be this overwhelming, high-end, scary production, right? We, we, I like to think of our studio as a little room with a big imagination. Do, do, does that help you at all, Brian? The muted thumbs up. I'll take it. Dominic, did you have a question? Oh, I was going to chime in real quick. So I missed a little bit of the presentation, so pardon me uh, if my question might be redundant, but uh, if you didn't speak about it, what do you think about videos for like outreach, you know, as on the agency side or just like shooting quick introductions for people? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I know. So I, I committed one of the cardinal sins that I talk to people about, which is don't shoot people with a fire hose. And I shot you guys with a fire hose because I wanted to make sure I got an, enough in to add some value. Um, yeah, so one of the things we use even here is uh, on the sales front, I make introduction videos, I make like warm lead videos, and I make personalized videos for VIP prospects and clients of, man, I really want to work. So it's like, you know, hey, Dominic, I, I love what you guys are doing there. Is it Diagon? Yeah, Diagon. I, I love what you guys are doing at Diagon Design SEO. And I really feel like with what we do with helping our clients build trust with video in their marketing sales and culture, we could be great partners with you as a pass through sale to your clients, but also to help you start building that bridge of trust to the people you want to reach. All right. So we could do personalized ones like that, but then templatize. I use a lot of templatized. Like if I didn't know you from Adam and I know nothing about your business, I have a templatized script of here's what Story Catcher does. Here's how we help people grow. Here's here's what you can do next to get started. And then once lately, it's been once every week or two weeks, I'll come in here and knock out like 50 names, right? <laughs> like, so we have the advantage of the AB cam so we can switch back and forth. <laughs> that was for James and he wasn't even looking. Um, uh, yeah disappointment uh but so i'll come in and do that i'll i've got the one box one that we have in the can don't need to do anything from it uh but then we're gonna jump over to the a cam and i'm just gonna say hey dominic found you guys online love what you're doing and i just got a quick message switch cameras you know so we we use them both both ways does that answer okay. what you were asking yeah that answers what i was looking for thank you sir yes sir Lori, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so just a request I get a lot working in the communication space is, you know, somebody will come to you, you know, somebody who's in leadership will say, hey, I think we should do a video. And, and which, you know, and I, you know, you have to explain, okay, video is a tactic, it's not a strategy, right? And so, um, or, you know, they'll come to you and they'll say, hey, look, this, you know, our, this corollary organization did this video. And here's the YouTube link. And then you see it got 18 views or something like that, right? Yeah. And so what kind of, is there like a matrix or some sort of decision-making process that you have to help people understand when video is the right tactic? Um, or are there pros, uh, projects which is better for and less so for others? What kind of decision-making goes on there? Yeah, absolutely. So so I, I love to ask goals up front. Like, what do you want out of this? Like, 
So, so with the people that are coming to you saying, man, I think we need to do a video with this. It's probably because like you, you probably understand, they just think it would look cool. Um, and, and so it's like, all right, well, what's the goal from it? Uh, is the juice worth the squeeze, so to speak, you know, uh, in your case, man, I would absolutely pull up old flops <laughs> and say, Hey, you know, we spent four, six, $8,000 doing this one. It's got 20 views and zero conversions, right? So you, you have to be able to measure all those things. Um, yeah, my decision-making tree is, can I say this in any other way? And if it needs to be video, does it need to be a high production video or can it be a really simple, hey, we're gonna talk like I'm talking right now, right? Like we're gonna do a white background. I'm just gonna tell you what's going on. It's going to have a call to action at the end easy because that's much more accessible and much more affordable than usually when somebody comes in and says we should do a video for this. It's a very big inclusive thing. I mean, I, I just did one on the Brad O'Hara side that was, again, that is like a $55,000 in product. And it's like I walked them through that process of, all right, what are the goals for this? Is there any other way to do it? Why do you think it needs to be a video? And what are your measurables, right? Any, anything, anything that somebody says, whether it's a video, a graphic, whatever, we need to create blank. It's like, okay, what are the lead metrics and what are the end measurables? Like, what is it going to take to get there, right? Like, so, so one, of our, one of our sins is, hey, we own a studio. It's cheap for us to go, go next door and just record, 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 record. When the reality is there's manpower hours, there's marketing hours, there's ad spend, there are costs associated with it, even though we own the studio. And so, all right, even if you're going to do a simple cell phone video, what's it actually going to cost us as an organization? And what are we going to get out of it? Um, yeah, it's, I think it's such a case by case basis. It's hard for me to give like a, a yes, no decision tree other than starting with what are the goals and outcomes and why do you think this needs to be a video as opposed to an infographic or an article? Is that helpful at all? So helpful. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. Are there any other questions before we wrap up today? All right. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Brad. This was incredibly valuable. Um, I hope that you all got a lot of good things out of this. Um, Want to let you know next month, the What Works webinar is going to be talking um, with photographer Clint Cothern with Critical Focus Studio. We're going to be talking about the, the power of imagery and how, if, how um, it's such an important part, your photography, the imagery that you're using um, also plays into marketing. And if it's not something that you've done or used in a while, whether it's for creating content, um, updating your website, um, it'll be a really great presentation. Um, and if nothing else, he's gonna talk about um, kind of the importance of your headshot as well, and how that's an important part of, it can be an important part of your, your marketing networking tools. Um, and so that will be um, March 24th. So I hope to see you all then. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you have any questions about marketing, uh, we're gonna follow up this video today. We're gonna send the recording of the video. Uh, we're gonna include information about uh, Brad's uh, call. You can set up with him to talk about your story. Uh, if you have any questions about your own marketing, um, I'm available as well. There's a link to set up a call with me um, if you have any questions about what works for your business. And I hope to see you all next month. Thank you all so much for being here today. Well, thank you. It's been great. Thanks, all.